The date is late December 1941. Japanese High Command has deemed it necessary for the Imperial Japanese Navy to work together with the Army to seize the assets in the Dutch East Indies. These assets are of course the rich and immense resources available in the Dutch East Indies which the Japanese do not have easy access to in their home regions. Historians would later refer to this offensive as the Centrifugal Offensive. With the Americans now in the war, the Japanese are extremely pushed for these supplies and having to spread even thinner with their naval assets to combat the American threat. Japanese estimations put the Allied naval threat at a minimum in the Dutch East Indies. Therefore, assembling Task Force Crane, consisting of three heavy cruisers and two light cruisers, with of course destroyer escorts, they set out to bombard the base at Singapore and remove any interference along the way. However, not everything is as it seems to the Japanese. Two British battleships have been sighted in recent days, patrolling the area around Singapore. This is a massive interference for the Japanese and cannot be dealt with very easily. The road ahead will be long and arduous, but the Japanese will press on. Hello, hello, and welcome to a brand new series of War on the Sea. We are in the thick of it to begin with already here. We've sighted an enemy submarine on our return from Singapore after successfully approaching that under the cover of night, therefore avoiding any enemy air cover there for the time being and reducing that down by two airfield levels, really reducing their air power in that area. Very successful in that department, but we're not out of the woods yet. We have sighted an enemy submarine. Looks like an American submarine to me. We're gonna be misidentifying things all over this series because I'm not anywhere near as familiar with Allied ships as I am, or at least uh, Allied ships in this particular theater. So I've lost sight of that. Bearing is 126. Asakaze can chase that down. We can increase our speed for now to really chase that down. And when we get closer to the last reported position, what we can do is slow back down then to help out our sighting. So we're going to slow down with the rest of our ships here. Make sure Mogami and our Tone come out here. We have another Mog Mogami named the Makuma, of course, leading Task Force Crane over here. This is a Task Force designed specifically for more minor service engagements. We do see those torpedoes coming in now. So what do we want to do to avoid them? Well, looks like Asakaze is probably going to be able to get away with uh, going full steam ahead for now. What about Tone is the question. That is the major asset. Let's increase our speed to help us turn, as well as the Sendai can increase our speed as well, just so we get clear over here. And I believe the Sendai is certainly armed with depth charges. Um, let's see, Mogami will want to increase speed and increase our rudder shift as well, just to make sure that we are turning away from those torpedoes. We're going to increase the speed with Fubuki as well and turn around. Uh, Mikuma, I think, needs really to just carry on going straight ahead. Let's come back to the Asakaza here, increase our speed once again, and turn to a port side here just to narrow our profile there, and that'll be absolutely brilliant. We can reduce our speed once again now to help contact that submarine which we will target now and that will help us there uh, get our uh, searchlights going let's turn in with Tone here we do have quite a wide spread to deal with so it's absolutely fine fairly easy but we will now reduce our speed to a full halt there looks like Mogami is going to have to take that off Increase turn, decrease speed a tad there. And what we'll do is turn to port here and increase speed with Fubuki. That would be very embarrassing for a start of a series there. <laughs> if we do get a collision, and Nagara's going to have to increase speed and get out as well. Hard to port there because otherwise the torpedoes will catch that. Let's see how we're maneuvering over here. Not taking any nudges just yet. The efficiency is down to 97%, which is interesting. But we're all clear there. We can reduce speed now. And stay ahead like that. And we'll try and catch up with the submarine. That would be an excellent first pick for this series. And really clear the space around Singapore. Let's pull our kamikaze around and see if we can catch this.
and that submarine did in fact go down to critical flooding. So an excellent pickup to begin with, one command point very much needed. We'll go into why that's so precious in just a second, but welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to once again War on the Sea. We're playing the centrifugal offensive campaign, which means we are the Japanese in their Dutch East Indies offensive. So, like we just said, we have bombarded Singapore down to a level one airfield and level two port. We have not sighted any surface ships just yet on our approach, but we do still have a lot of time to get back to Kuching, which is one of our main bases in Borneo, well, our only base in Borneo, but we do have another home port in Mindanao over here, specifically Davao. We're sending a very small invasion fleet straight on over to Sandakan over here in northern Borneo to take that level three airfield. And that would be some more command points coming in uh, from a game bit perspective, of course, uh, every week. And we're only getting eight command points per week, which is very, very tight indeed. We are not going to be getting out any heavy hitters for quite some time. This is what we have to work with. If we lose anything or if we have to say goodbye for repairs at any time in the future, we're going to be struggling quite a bit. So we've got to work with what we've got here and really rely on air power as well from Borneo and such. So we're going back with Task Force Crane to resupply after expending a lot of our high explosive ammunition from our heavy cruisers there. We were able to get a very good bombardment there because we have three heavy cruisers in this task force. We are going to be expending engineering and supplies and fuel and such when we do resupply, so that's something else to think about uh, as well. So, that's what things are looking like at the moment. Now, we do have tail that there are some enemy battleships in this area, roughly. We have tried scouting this out, but because it's 22.02 hours, we cannot launch any patrol aircraft to scout those out. So we're gonna just pray that we don't get intercepted on our long journey back over to Kuching, which is going to take 15 hours to do so. And that's a lot of time to be inactive in this area. But it needs to be done. We need to uh, bombard that airfield. And I think we're probably going to try and bombard Palembang as well, because reducing enemy air power is going to be absolutely crucial if we want to move at all freely down towards Sumatra and Java in this campaign. Because we don't get access to any aircraft carriers let's see for quite some time and that is going to be the case for a lot of our fleet we don't get access to Soryu until 1942 we're on December 41 we do have to wait until February and that's the case with Hiryu uh, Shokaku we actually can guess out uh, Shokaku but that's a very 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 heavy investment to start with you will only have that out pretty much as far as offensive capabilities go if you go for that first and I'd rather keep out some surface ships because you do get some generalist uh, use out of those. As a note, we're also going to try and just reduce the amount of submarines we use in this playthrough. We do get access to them. We've got good access to submarines, actually, the Japanese, as you should think. Is this moving? Why is this not moving? Let's try and get in. How long is it going to take? 18 hours. Yeah, we're probably moving about now. That'll be fine. We do have some destroyers here, but really terrible with our AA capabilities, are we here? So we're going to need to rely on uh, some cap from Devour, I think, later on. But yeah, we're going to try and uh, not use or rely on submarines for this playthrough because it really will make things very, very easy indeed. It's now daytime hours. We can launch out some flights. We're going to send out some Helens with some armor-piercing bombs blindly, pretty much into this open area here, just in the hopes of actually finding those battleships because we have been hit, uh, given the hint that they're about, and I'd rather soften them up, and maybe even sink them, of course, with air power. Well, no sighting of those enemy ships, and we have managed to very safely get over to Sandakan over here. Let's see how our invasion's going. Pretty damn decent. Uh, we thought we'd go more heavy on the supplies for this, so that we do have something left over and something for our troops, of course, to eat when they're there. Um, so that's going to be a very nice level three airfield for us. Probably take a couple of days to get over. Might want to reinforce that with some troops very soon, but we will have to do some patrols, I think, to see if the enemy is rather active in this area. I have sent out some minor patrols throughout the days already. But there's been no sign of anything. We will increase those patrols, I think, just to double check. 
but so long as there's no enemy interference, that should be ours within the next couple of days, which is excellent already. Well, once again, no sighting of any enemy ships. We are mostly through day two already. We have sent out some Helens with an all-purpose 800 kilogram bombs to make use of this new update. It's actually more on the sea. We can now aerial or strategically bomb enemy bases with aerial drop bombs. So let's do that. Lovely stuff, and we can return to base. So clearly nowhere near as damaging as shells from surface ships. You wouldn't expect it to be, but that's actually very useful indeed. That's a nice soften up there. We do have some Oscars with some drop tanks here, but they're very, very close to running out of fuel. Uh, that was just in case, of course, we do get intercepted. They do still have aerial radar, and this is, of course, an airfield we're bombarding here. So we're sending out some scouts, as you can see, in these sorts of directions. But really, nothing, nothing apparent. It's eerily quiet so far. But we're going to try and stay safe and uh, just play defensive at the moment, I think. Well, finally, we have some sort of action. Let's bring our scouts, I think, a little closer to... Actually, no, they can, they can, they can pull out. We're going to issue a retreat order, I think, because we have some fighters over here launch, of course, from a nearby airfield. We'll have bombs attached to them, I'm very sure. So they're gonna be going for our heavy cruisers, most likely. We have taken the time now to actually try and get some landing forces, very, very minor landing forces on this task force now. So we're going straight back to Singapore to try and test the waters there to see exactly what the defensive strength is looking like. If we can take that very early on with a very minor group, and this is very, very minor, of course. Uh, we'll be very happy there, but I doubt that's going to be the case. But we can always test the forces, land, and then retreat if need be. Going to try and run away, of course, from these bombers. We'll see what happens. See where they're going. Well, I haven't actually noticed any bomb drops, so can only assume they've missed, really. Let's slow down here, because we did order two heavy cruisers to adjust their course, uh, hoping to dodge any potential bombs, and it's likely they did. Didn't take any hits, but I didn't see any splashes either. So, not entirely sure what that was about, to be honest. Not entirely sure that was about at all. Are we going to take a nudge here from the Tonne? No, we're not. Excellent stuff. So just wasting all the timer now to retreat. Don't think we downed anything. No, we didn't down any aircraft either. So just a warning from the enemy there, but you can see they're smoking. They have taken some glancing hits, so they're gonna be a little more vulnerable if they do decide to come back later on. But the enemy has also sent in a wave of what appears to be torpedo bombers. Certainly is. Hazard a guess that they're swordfish. Once again, my identification with uh, British uh, ships and planes, not the best. I don't know, it's surprising there, it really should be. Uh, but we need to move either way. Let's move a heavy port side turn with our full formation here, try and turn away, get them lingering in our AA range for as long as possible. They are going to have to circle round to dive down to attack altitude there, which is, well, best for us, of course. Works in our favour. Hopefully we get some sort of lucky flak shots while they are manoeuvring. But of course, IGN, IGN ships are not very well known for their AA defensive ability. Very, very lacking in good flak and small arms. But well, we have shot down one of those planes but ooh, what are they doing? That's a very, very steep turn there. Looks like they're going straight for Tone, are they? Don't like that at all. I think what we're gonna have to do is pause very quickly. The smoke's getting in the way of the camera, I think, more than the enemy planes. And think backwards here and actually turn into the enemy planes. We're gonna move around with Sendai as well to get a broadside there to get more, uh, more shots out, as well as the Hatsuhara there. Mogami can follow that out as well, just to create some space. Fubuki, not entirely sure what that's doing at all, so we're gonna get that an even harder uh, port side turn away from our tonic. 
Hopefully we get some sort of good shots here. That'd be great. What the hell was that? What happened there? Misfire? <laughs> Big misfire? Couldn't tell you. Could not tell you. Still got their torpedoes on. Looks like they have dropped here for Mogami. We're going to have to change our turn immediately for that then. Can't see the streams because the smoke is actually getting in our way. Here they are. Let's... Oh, I think we're going to be taking a torpedo hit. That rudder shift did not come in quick enough there. Did not come in quick enough. And actually probably wanted to keep our speed up. Everyone brace. Torpedo's impact coming. And... Not the worst there. Not the worst. Didn't hit anything too major there. This one has yet to drop. And in fact is down before it can drop. So that's excellent. Well, we can live with a couple hits there on the Mogami. Did destroy a couple components, but it's not the end of the world. Certainly not needed. And we can retreat out. And I think we certainly will do. And after that, we have not been encountered by any further aircraft, which is just absolutely excellent, if you ask me. Very happy to say that. We get to unload all of our cargo very tentatively to just test the waters, as we said, see how that's going on Singapore. And yeah, going to take a lot more than just a few hundred men there, but that does help us gauge uh, where we need to be, really, for that. We're going to retreat off of there. We're going to pull back. It's absolutely fine. We can do that. And uh, what are we going to do with those men, then? Because... Seems a bit of a shame to just send them straight back home. Perhaps we can push. Hmm. I'm not too sure, really. I think really just sending them back, which is a shame. It is a shame. But that's not a problem. Just gets, lets us gauge exactly what Singapore's looking like. And that's clearly going to have to be for another day. With a true landing force, of course. So let's retreat back. We'll send these over once again to uh, Kuching in Borneo. Might think about sending back that cruiser uh, because that's some torpedo defense and engineering we can really, really want to have with our ships there. Going to try and get in one more engagement today. I'd love to see some sort of enemy surface ships. It looks like we've made it back pretty much to Mindanao as well. So we're going to load up once again. Is there any progress over here? It's a bit like we need to wait a little longer there, but not a problem. I think we might want to go straight for Tarakan if that's the case then. Well, we have finally encountered some sort of surface ships here, guys. Looks like we have either the Leander or the Hobart, which is absolutely brilliant for us. We're going to immediately dive down with some nails with torpedoes attached and targets that straight away. Should be able to get that on time. Just reduce our speed the tiniest bit, actually. Uh, same here. Might want to turn out to get a better uh, angle, actually, you know, with this group at least. It's going to be very tight. And increase our speed here once again. Might even have to do a manual drop if this is going to be the case. Yeah, let's actually just pause very quickly. Turn around. Oh, it's just too close. I bloody hate that side there. Okay, let's slow down a tad then and move in and take control of this full group. And we are going to do a mangle drop here, I think. So, find the lead that we think we need. And I think that's probably about it. Let's drop with everyone there. Oh, we lost two just as we pressed drop there. Rather sad to see that. Rather, rather sad indeed. So we've got to hope that hits now. It doesn't look like it will do. Let's press attack here. Looks like we did crash though into that Leander. And that will be a torpedo hit. So what about the next group?
And there we go. Australian light cruiser has been sunk in a very nice pickup for us there indeed. So that's a submarine and a light cruiser today. Only took five in game days to actually spot <laughs> any surface ships there. Let's move that map note because that was in fact for that group. Only surviving with one nail there. And that does mean we will have to spend some engineering and such to replenish there. It should be fine. We haven't spent too much uh, at Kuching much at all so far. So that's absolutely fine. But uh, yeah, that is going to be, unfortunately, guys, all we have time for today. Please do let me know if uh, you're liking the idea of this series in the comments. Any feedback would be absolutely brilliant. Do like reading your comments. It's very useful to me as well. So fingers crossed next time we do spot those battleships because I'm very scared that these waters are too open and uh, there could be something really nasty lurking in there. But that will be for next time. Thank you very much for watching everyone and I shall see you in the future. May all of your nights and days be auspicious. Goodbye.